Hi, I'm Brett. This is another video update to explain some of the background history of the CVT Trans with the Subaru range of models. And as we've spoken about in our previous updates, the CVT transmission, like all manufactured parts, um, has its strengths and weaknesses. And doesn't necessarily mean the CVT is bad, but there is a limitation on how much torque and power you can put through any transmission. You know, think back to the four-speed and five-speed automatic transmissions in the early model Subarus. Um, they all had a mechanical limit as well. Well, we all started to know that the CVT transmission also has a mechanical limit on how much torque you can put through a transmission because it's, a me it's not a mechanically direct connection like a manual transmission where you've got gears driving gears um, through a clutch input. So on a constantly variable transmission, which is a CVT part, Subaru opt to allow the transmission to try and hold the car in peak torque as much as possible to get the best performance and fuel economy out of the uh, direct injection engine. Now when you improve the performance of the direct injection engine, typically in the uh, WRX but also in the Forester model with the turbo engine, you end up increasing the torque to a level where the CVT can't hold the torque and it starts to slip and what it effectively does is damages the transmission because you've got one input side and the output side and connected in the middle is a variable control mechanism that changes the ratio using cones and direct um, a specially designed belt that can, under high torque situations, slip. Now what I've got behind me here at the moment is a, a high pressure tool or gauge that we are checking the line pressure out of the transmission because we've got some data that tells us what the CVT trans is supposed to have um, within a certain tolerance. And we're talking about between 4.5 and 6 megapascals, or in old man's terms, 650 PSI to 870 PSI should be measured on this gauge when you do a stall test to check the transmission within the factory specifications. Now, a reason why we're doing that is what it does is this car here is factory standard. It gives us the ability to compare the factory standard settings compared to a tuned setting because typically when you tune a manufacturer's car through the engine control unit, and as what we do in all of our Subarus, there is a signal relationship between the engine control unit and the transmission. Now, not much of a signal and a manual transmission, but there are some signals, um, and we'll touch on that later, such as um, neutral position switch. But on an automatic transmission, or like on a Mitsubishi SST transmission, the transmission control unit looks for a signal from the engine control unit to so predictively control what it is expected to do, so they talk to each other. Now in the Subaru, we know there's a relationship between the engine control unit and the CVT transmission control unit, and what we want to make sure is the CVT transmission control unit is getting the right data to make sure that it is achieving as much lockup in the transmission to reduce the risk of slip and high torque situations because we know there is a risk um, if it's got the wrong programming in the engine control unit that would possibly make the CVT transmission think that it's got less torque coming in than what it thinks. So therefore there's a greater chance of that transmission slipping. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to get, I've got one of my guys sitting in the, um, in the uh, car and we're going to do a stall test and you can watch the gauge. So to meet specification, it needs to be between four in here. So we'll do it one more time. And you can, okay, and that's it, Gav. So what you can see is the pressure was between five and six megapascals, which is within the desired target to meet the factory standard uh, um, results. So what we then do is we then use this data to compare to one of our modified tuned cars to confirm that the CVT is seeing the right data out of the engine control unit to make sure that we are getting maximum lockup in the CVT trans to be able to take the increased torque. And this is some of the stuff that we do as part of our testing with all of our um, custom ECU tunes because it's not just a case of tuning the engine ECU to make sure the engine runs reliably, because obviously that is important. You need to make sure that anything that relies on that engine data and those signals, such as the transmission, is gonna get the information it needs. And in some situations with some tunes by other workshops, that signal is incorrect, and that will allow the CVT trans to think it's not gonna get as much torque as what it expects, and therefore it will slip. And a really good example of that is the SST transmission in the Mitsubishi Evos and the Mitsubishi Rallouts. 
if you do a program in the engine control unit on those model engines and don't get the right torque signal communicating with the transmission, the transmission thinks it's effectively still talking to a uh, expecting standard power. You put big grunt through the engine, tune it properly, engine might be running perfectly good, but the transmission thinks it's only gonna get normal torque and it, all of a sudden it gets this massive wallop of torque through it and the transmission actually will slip excessively and do damage to the transmission. So there you have it, that's some of the information will help you understand more as we do more testing on the CVT trans with this range of cars. At the moment, we're still working on an update. We're hoping that we can find some solution to ensure the transmission is as reliable and robust as possible with the right tunes. And that's why you can rely on some of the information we'll give you in this channel. But um, for now, make a comment at the bottom of this and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And we'll give you some updates again soon. Bye for now.